Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Sachs, and I am the Chief Clinical Officer of Freedom Technologies Group. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the DC Air wireless sensor and get outstanding images for your patients. It's as simple as pressing the acquire button. The twain will pop up. It's telling you it's in the docking station, so it's ready to be picked up and paired, and you're ready to go. The DC Air includes five different holder or bite block types. Let's look at how each are assembled, disassembled, and used to acquire various types of images. First, let's review the bite wing holder. The bite wing holder includes two sensor attachment points. Most often, the sensor's battery will adapt into the attachment point closer to the distal aspect of the bite surface, which is the smaller curved portion marked with the letter D. The mesial aspect of the bite surface is marked with the letter M. The sensor should be divided symmetrically behind the bite surface and should fit snugly across the attachment points. It's also possible to attach the sensor's battery into the attachment point closer to the mesial portion of the bite surface. This is ideal for achieving better interior coverage such as the distal aspect of the canines or for achieving better comfort with premolar bite wings for patients that have smaller mouths or anterior tori. The wider M side of the bite wing holder will always exit the front of the patient's mouth, while the D side sits comfortably towards the back of the patient's arch. The wireless sensor can be oriented either way in the holder, depending on the desired shot or the patient's needs. To remove the sensor from the bite wing holder, apply direct pressure on the back of the sensor towards the bite surface. Don't twist the sensor to break it free, as one, this is more difficult, and also it can apply torque to the holder itself. To attach the positioning bar and ring to the bite wing holder, simply place the angled end of the bar into the bite wing holder until it snaps into place. The aiming ring slides onto the bar with the alignment tabs facing away from the holder. You will see the sensor is aligned in the middle of the aiming ring. To disconnect the positioning bar and ring, simply slide the ring off of the bar. Then pinch the bar's attachment to the holder to allow it to release and pull to remove. Again, the sensor is removed from the bite wing holder by applying pressure directly to the back side of the sensor. With the bite wing holder all set up, place it into the patient's mouth along the bite surface. Slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's cheek as possible, and position your x-ray source through the ring also as close to the cheek or the skin as possible. The anterior zero profile holder is used for acquiring both upper and lower anterior PAs. It has a single attachment point for the sensor's battery. There's an attachment point for the alignment bar, and the alignment ring slides onto the bar with the tabs facing away from the holder. On the front of the bite block, there is a vertical line to help with centering the bite block across the desired area, usually the patient's midline. To remove the sensor from the anterior holder, simply apply pressure between the sensor and the tab on the back of the holder. To acquire a lower anterior PA, have the sensor oriented downwards and at a slight angle towards the patient. Have the patient close slowly as the sensor is positioned behind the lower incisors. Bring the ring and x-ray source as close to the face as possible for optimal results. To get an upper anterior PA, simply flip the direction of the holder. No need to reorient the sensor. Oftentimes, the longer medium bar length is used with the anterior bite block to ensure adequate clearance of the nose and chin. The anterior holder can also be useful for acquiring vertical periapicals of premolars. This is accomplished by offsetting the position of the bite block distally to position the sensor's face behind the desired area. The posterior holder includes two sensor attachment points as well as two alignment bar slots for versatile coverage options. Most often, the alignment bar can be used in the upper slot, marked with the letter U, and the sensor will be connected with the more curved side towards the back of the patient's arch. As always, the alignment ring slides onto the alignment bar with the positioning tabs facing away from the holder and the patient's face. It's sometimes beneficial to use the lower bar attachment slot on the posterior holder, marked with the letter L, for lower posterior PAs. This will help extend the image below the apices of the molars if the patient's anatomy makes it difficult to do so with the standard configuration. The sensor can also be used with the curved end towards the front of the mouth if more interior coverage or comfort is desired. 
To remove the sensor from the posterior holder, apply pressure between the sensor and the tab on the back of the holder. Use two hands to position the posterior holder. Take a slight angle to slide the sensor into place and have the patient start to close slowly. Use one finger on the side of the bite block to gently push back the commissure. Slide the ring as close to the cheek as possible and position your x-ray source through the ring. For patients with small mouths or tenderness, a cotton roll can be useful to slide between the bite surface or the bite block in the patient's arch to maximize comfort. The endodontic holder is perhaps the most versatile of the zero profile holders. The sensor can adapt with it in four different directions to help position the sensor exactly how and where you need it. It features a textured handle for either the patient or the assistant, and the sensor is removed by applying pressure between the sensor and the ring on the back of the holder. Having the sensor oriented vertically in the endodontic holder is typically ideal for acquiring images of anterior teeth. Use the bisecting angle technique with your x-ray source and minimize distance of the skin to ensure optimal image quality. Having the sensor oriented horizontally in the endodontic holder is great for acquiring images of posterior teeth, especially third molars. The sensor can also be oriented perpendicular to the endodontic holder. This is great for capturing vertical bite wings as well as vertical periapicals. Finally, the Zero Profile Occlusal Holder is essentially a plastic sleeve that protects the sensor while acquiring occlusal radiographs. Insert the sensor battery side first into the occlusal holder and simply slide the sensor out to remove. The occlusal sleeve is inserted into the mouth perpendicular to the patient's midline. Have the patient close slowly on the occlusal holder and position your x-ray source below or above the sensor's face to acquire the desired image. Now that you've seen the holders, let's review the imaging workflow. It begins by docking the sensor in the room you want to use it in. In your imaging software, click on the desired layout or template and ensure that the DC air is selected as your imaging source. Once activated, the twain will open and will show the sensor's status. Seeing the blue sensor on docking station status means we can pick the sensor up and it will automatically initialize. The sensor's status in the twain will go from yellow sensor initializing to green sensor ready. At this point, the sensor can be placed in the holder and positioned for the desired image. When the image is acquired, you will see the downloading image notification in the sensor status bar, as well as the progress of the image's download. A preview image will be displayed while the final processing is completed, and then the image will return into the template. In most imaging programs, the DC or Twain will automatically reopen with the sensor status set to ready for the next image. If for any reason you wish to end the acquisition early, use the save and exit button in the Twain to close the acquisition software and stop the capture. Let's review some of the many features included with the DC or Twain. To resize the Twain window, Right-click on the sensor icon in your system tray and select one of the options under GUI modality. At the bottom of the Twain window, you will see the sensor status bar, which will be blue for sensor docked, yellow for initializing or other warnings, or green for sensor ready. You will also see the sensor's battery indicator as well as an indication for the sensor's signal strength. The top of the Twain window includes five feature buttons. The first we'll review is the endo button. This activates the sensor's endo or endodontic mode, which turns off the automatic sleep feature or battery save feature of the sensor. This mode is useful when you want to keep the sensor ready and active for longer intervals of time, such as during an endodontic procedure. To toggle endo mode on and off, the sensor must be in the docking station. The sensor icon button in the top of the Twain window is used to change the orientation return of the sensor on the fly. As we'll see in a moment, this is typically not necessary as orientation can also be set in the backend settings. Using the download last image button will recall the last image acquired on the sensor from the sensor's onboard memory. The gear or settings icon will open the DCR Twain backend settings. 
The Twain offers numerous settings to customize the sensor's operation. Power off timeout adjusts the amount of time the sensor can spend off the docking station before sleeping to preserve battery. HDR adjusts contrast and sharpening. Gauss value adjusts smoothing. Histogram width and center adjust contrast and brightness respectively. There are also options for default image orientation and single or batch capture modes. When you're done adjusting settings, use the save button to apply them and use the save and exit button to close the Twain when desired.